All right, so the last and fourth FRQ you run into is the qualitative quantitative translation. And there are fourth, there are three things that you're asked to do. You're gonna make and justify a claim about a scenario. Probably this is a qualitative part of it, not with equations or anything like that, but you're using physics principles. You're also gonna derive an equation. So this is a standard derivation like we've done before. And then you will do one of the following things one of these three things. You may justify whether these two are consistent with each other or aligned, it makes sense. That's pretty common. The other two, the other two are about predicting. That is to say, you would predict, like we would completely change the situation and you're gonna justify how those things would change based off of your analysis. Or you'll make a predictions um, if just change, if just a small tweak was like we double the height of something or double the amount of charge or double the capacitance or something like that, that is consistent with um, the things that you did in part, parts of uh, the previous parts there. So that's the three parts of the question. It's a pretty short, it's the least amount of points um, worth. So let's go through an e &M example for this QQT. So figure shows a circuit containing a closed switch S of resistance R and an initial uncharged parallel clay capacitor. Uncharged means the charge is zero which implies the voltage is zero on that capacitor initially. Uh, with an ideal constant current source. So this is a current source. This means they'll always generate this current will be constant regardless of the voltage. A little bit different, but it's the same idea. The, we're still gonna do the same circuit analysis. The potential difference across the capacitor is taken to be positive when it has a positive charge on a plate. So like this is gonna be how we're gonna do. It. Long time after the switch has been open, Okay, so we're, we've opened the switch for a long time. The rate of change of the potential difference across the capacitor approaches a constant value. Indicate whether that constant value is negative or zero. So if you wait a long eno enough time, this is a tricky thing, is that there isn't going to be any current going through the capacitor. In fact, all the current is gonna flow like this, okay? Um, so in this case, what's gonna happen is the current's just gonna flow like this, no current's gonna flow here. And so you're gonna have the voltage on the capacitor is gonna be the same as this guy. Well, that potential difference is gonna be positive over here because the current goes from higher potential to lower potential. So because they're in parallel, it's gonna be positive. And that's because the there is no current, current through the capacitor. So all the current, all I const goes through the resistor. The resistor in parallel with the capacitor. Um, the voltage, the, the potential is higher on the top side, top of the resistor. Okay, another way you could argue it is you could say like, the only way this thing, like initially some current is gonna go into the capacitor. So we're gonna add charge onto the top plate and eventually we'll stop adding charge onto the top plate. So that's another way you could justify why it's positive. Okay, derive but do not solve a differential equation for the rate of change on the potential difference on the capacitor after the switch is opened. Okay, so now we've now, um, let's see. Um, After which is, okay, so now we open it, okay? And we want to express your answers in terms of what's the differential equation. So now you've waited, it, it was closed for a long time, so there's no current, now it's uncharged. And so now we have this situation here. Well, what we have the current coming in and it's gonna split into two branches, right? So there's gonna have the current on the capacitor and you're gonna have it, and you wanna you want something for the potential difference, and we'll talk about that. We know that the current through a cup, so this is the current through the resistors, this is current through the capacitor. We know by Kirchhoff's current law that once you open this, the current is I constant, must split into these two branches. So you're gonna have I constant is gonna equal the current through the resistor plus the current through the capacitor. Well, if we look at this as the voltage across the, or delta V, delta V is the voltage across the capacitor. Because it's parallel with the resistor, it has the same delta V. So the current through the resistor is gonna be delta V over R, V equals I R, and the current through the capacitor is gonna be C D delta V DT, right? Because the current through a capacitor is C D V DT. Right, and we use delta V for that there. Okay, and that's gonna equal I const. And that is a differential equation that has um, delta V and 
the derivative of delta v. So that's called a, that would be a differential equation because that's the derivative of delta v in there. And we don't have to solve that. That's enough for the solution for that one, right? So we don't need to solve that thing. Um, we're just going to look at that as the solution there. Um, so, um, yeah. So then with the process repeated with resistor removed from the circuit, leaving a gap in the middle branch, okay? And the capacitor initially in charge of the current source again drains a constant current icon. Indicate with the rate of change of delta, the rate of change of the potential of the capacitor shortly after, but not immediately after the switch is open will be zero, non-zero constant, or, or non-constant value, or a value with increasing magnitude. Okay, so they're asking you about the C, D, V, D, T. So let's look at our differential equation and let's solve for the rate of change of the voltage because they're asking you about that amount there, right? So we have the D delta V D T. So you can move the this guy to the over and then do one over C. It's gonna be I const minus delta V over R. Now, what's different when you immediately close it? Well, um, if the R is infinite, then what's different is this thing is going to go to zero because the R is going to be huge because there's going to be no current through there. So then you're just going to have this part. So this was reducing it a little bit. Well, okay, so initially, delta V, delta v was initially zero because it was initially uncharged, right? So there's no, the delta V was zero because the charge was zero across the capacitance. So um, what's going to happen here is now the delta d is going to be I just over IC times I cons. Well, this is a constant. This is a constant. So it's going to be a non-zero. It's not going to be zero. It's going to be a non-zero constant value. And it's not increasing in magnitude. It's just constant. All of these values are constant. See, before it was just going to, it would decrease. This would eventually go to zero. But now it's just going to be constant because this thing is constant. And you just want to justify by using your differential equation and say, like, well, um, the, with removing the resistor, being R makes R go to infinity mathematically because it's like you have infinite resistance. It's not going to pass through there at all. So dV dt equals 1 over C times I const, and both I const and C are constant values. Okay, and so therefore, this thing is going to be uh, constant. 